Okay, so I had a question um, from another video that I have on YouTube from somebody that wanted to know the complete process of digitizing the design. Um, I think it was my uh, rabbit video on um, when pull compensation is not enough. So I agreed to do that. It's going to take a few videos to get the whole thing done. Um, these processes aren't fast because it was a manual digitizing process, not an automatic one. And it's important to understand how to manual, manually digitize. You don't always have a graphic that works in the auto digitize. And even if it does, you may need to edit it to make it better, like I did in the Frog series recently. So go to my channel and check out all the videos if you haven't seen my other videos because there's quite a lot to learn in the Banana software. Now, I did create some time ago this Digitize It workflow, which I uploaded to my website and put in the community for people to download for free. Um, and I'll be going through the design I do with this workflow so that... Um, You've, it's got some logical process. If you've already got it from my website, then that's great. But if you haven't got it, I'm going to put up a new post with this um, workflow document available and also the graphic I'm using for this design so that you can download both of those and do this exercise. And that'll all be free. And the community on my website is free as well. So let's just go over to my website and have a look at how you access that. For those who don't know, I'll put a chapter marking here. So if you're already um, a member of my community, you can skip the next bit of the video and get on and move to the next part where I actually start the project. So there's quite a lot. This is um, a PDF and you can see there's quite a number of steps and they're very briefly listed here. Um, the actual process is a little bit more detailed than that, but this is a guideline to remind you of what to do in the process. Okay, um, so uh, without further ado, I will move that off the screen. Um, that way so that I can still refer to it over there, but it's not in the recording. <laughs> okay um, Good now the, As I said, let's go over to my website So I'll just bring up the internet and I've navigated to it and I'll put a link to that or well, there should be one on my channel, but I'll put a link to it in the description as well So machine embroidery and digitizing it's very very plain um, and you can see here that I've got some digitizing lessons for sale. Um, so just click on here and, and it'll take you to those lessons that you can buy. Um, and then I've got my free Banana Digitizers Club. And all you do is click on Learn More if you're not already a member or and you've never bought anything from me before. And here um, you can just click Join Now. And that will, in essence create an account for my website. So once you've done that, whenever you want to come back, and I suggest you bookmark the website so that you can get back quickly, you can just log in over here. So I'll log in now. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, so I've logged in in and when you create an account this is how you will see your um, page this will load and by default it goes to my products which if you've bought any of my courses they will show here and if you um, continue down it will you, at some point Point, you can actually look at the other products from here. Are oh, more products? So you can click on more products, and they've just changed the layout of this page since I was last in here. Um, so all the other products are listed here. So um, you don't browse the products from the website, which you can do if you're not logged in, um, but you don't have to log out to go and see the other products, is what I'm saying. You can find them all on your home page when you log in. But up here, there is a community tab. So you can click on that 
and that will open the community. Now here I've got, um, you can search the community for different things, but I've also got some various topics and you can view all the topics. And um, I'll have latest news posts and I'll probably, I'll put a new post in the latest news. So if I click on the latest news, I'll put a new post in here before I publish this video with that PDF and the image for you to download. Okay, and then you can just log out. And that'll take you back to the home page. So I'll just close that now. All right, so here we are back at the design. Now, my first um, point in the digitizing workflow was to define your pro project. So what I mean by that is what are you going to embroider on? What size is it? What fabric type is it? And what will the laundering requirements be for that project? They're all things you need to consider because they will affect the type of stitches you choose to use um, and the stabiliser and all sorts of other things when you actually embroider it. But in the digitising process, the size will dictate what type of graphic you can use, how much detail you put into it, <clears throat> what type of stitches you use. For instance, for a child's piece of clothing, um, you don't want to use long, loose stitches that you may create yourself on for something that's more, though you know, not the default settings. And even um, a lot of satin fills can wear a lot quicker than the um, basic step fill which is very hard wearing. So if it's going to be washed a lot of times, um, it's going to be rubbing up against things, then you would use the step fill. So they're the things you need to think through before you even start digitizing. The next thing is to gather your artwork. Um, most times you'll want a picture to work with. Um, so I have got this rabbit picture. I wanted to make a rabbit. Um, and I've loaded it into the software already. Now I have videos on loading images, but in this case it was a JPEG and you can actually, I'll delete it and reload it so you can see how that's done. So I've actually locked it, I think, so we'll unlock it. Um, and I'll hide that hoop and I'll select that and delete it. And let's reload it. So just come up here to your insert artwork. And if you've downloaded my rabbit picture, you can use that. Um, otherwise, another piece of artwork and you know, navigate to where you've got it and open it. And it will open. Now, this is a huge image. If you don't see it when you click open and, and it goes back to the embroidery canvas screen, just make sure you've got the show bitmap artwork highlighted. This is a JPEG. So if it was a vector file, you would have to have show vector artwork highlighted. But I've, this is a bitmap um, JPEG. So I've got the little daisy highlighted. Um, you'll know if it's there, even if you can't see it, because you'll have something in your color film over here. So in this case, I've got the holding placeholder. Um, if you click on this little show objects icon, it will change to the show objects and it will actually show the image. So, or it might be the other way around, I can't remember now. When I've created some objects, we can double check that. Um, but when it's in one of the modes, um, you just get a placeholder. I think that's in color block mode. So I have videos on the color film too, I believe, but I'll check that. I'll put all the relevant videos to that relate to this one down in the description so you can refer to those. Um, okay, so the next thing I said to do in my digitizing workflow was to load the artwork and then size it. So now you 
By this stage, you should have decided on what size you want the finished embroidery. And it's always better to size the image to and digitize the embroidery to the closest size to what you want. Um, although the software does a really good job of resizing um, designs that are created in the software, that is the all-in-one type designs, the art designs in this case, um, it's always better to digitize close to the size to start with because there will be some things that will change that you don't want to change. For instance, a satin outline, as you increase the size of the object, the width of the satin outline gets wider and you may not want that. Um, that's just one example. So size your image. Now this is huge as I said. I've got it selected because it's got the little black handles. If you accidentally click off, it'll become deselected. So click on it and again and you'll get your little handles. When you see those, you know it's selected and the size will show up here in the width and height. So I'm going to, it's um, 505 0.72 millimeters square. Now that's huge. That's 50 and a half centimeters. I probably only want about 10% of that size. Um, so I'm going to start by changing it down to 10% of that size. I've got my lock locked, so it's um, proportional scaling. So I only need to change one of those um, height or width to what I want and enter. And that has reduced the size considerably. I can still zoom into it, but it is now only 50 millimetres, 50 and a half millimetres wide, which is five centimetres, which is um, a lot more realistic. Now, in this case, this image has quite a lot of white background. So it's hard sometimes to resize exactly how you want it. Um, when you have an image like that because you don't you're not going to digitize the white background so another way you can check is to use the view measure tool so up here we've got view measure and i can click on the top of the ear and come down to roughly where the bottom of the feet are and that gives me almost um, oh, 47 and a half millimetres, so that's 4.7 centimetres, near close, getting up there to close to five, deep. And I'll escape from that. And I can left click on the left of the, of the rabbit and come over here and I've got to allow for that ear that pokes out a bit, so I'll keep going. And it's about 3.6 centimetres wide, 36 millimetres. So... I might want to go a little bit bigger than that. So I can resize it in another way. I'll escape out of my measuring tool and I have to press the button again, the escape button again, to get rid of the tool. Um, if I select the image, you can resize with these handles. So I can reduce it or increase it and you'll get a, a little box telling you what size you're going to. So to allow for that extra white border, I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'll go up to 60 roughly. It's close enough. Okay, so the, the corner ones do it proportionally, the side ones will just change the width and the top and bottom ones will change the height. So you can stretch an image too in any of those directions. Once you've got the size you want and if you still have trouble visualizing how big that is, sometimes it's a good idea to load a hoop that will give you some idea. Um, that's the medium Bonina hoop. And so that's still quite small. Um, so it depends how much detail you're putting in the design as to um, how big you need to make it. That's another um, issue to consider because if you are putting a lot of detail, sometimes you have to make the design a little bit bigger, otherwise that detail just ends up um, like a clump of stitching because it's just too fine. Remember that embroidery is not printing, so you can't put extremely fine detail into an embroidery and expect it to stitch out and look nice. Um, experience will tell you that. But um, I'm going to make this design very simple. I'll just hide that hoop again because it's distracting. Um, I'm going to, you know, make it solid objects with an outline and the outline will make the definition of the legs 
<coughs> and the face and the ears, etc. So um, um, I will be ad-libbing, so to speak, at, um, with my objects. It, it, I'm not looking to make it realistic in any way or form. So this size will still work. Okay. Now, once you've sized it, the next thing to do is to save your design. I've already done that. I've saved it as rabbits. So, but you would go file, save as, or even if it's your, the first time you're saving it, if you click on the save design, the dialogue will open. Um, if I click on that now, it's just going to save over the top because I've already done it, um, which it's doing now very slowly. Um, so if you haven't saved it, a dialogue will open and ask you to find a location and give it a name. And so you will do that so that if anything happens, like the software crashes, your power goes off or whatever, you're not just relying on the backup file that the software created. You have got a copy of the design um, saved. The software does save updates to your digitizing periodically. Um, if I go to the options toolbar and in the general, um, I think it's in the general, yes, up the top here, it auto saves the design every 10 minutes. Now that's the default, you can change that. So if you want to save it every five minutes, if you're doing a lot of intense digitizing, um, you can get it to auto save every five minutes. So um, that's just a little safeguard. And of course, at that time, it usually updates the backup file as well. So you may lose a little bit of digitizing when you reload the design if you have a, a crash, but it won't be the whole design. I'm going to leave it at the default, so I'll go OK. All right, so we've saved our design. The next thing we're going to do is apply a fabric setting if necessary. So. I have a video on that too and I'll link it in the description of how to do it. But the software has default settings for the density of the stitching and the length of the stitches and the types of underlay, etc. If you're going to sew on something other than a medium weight cotton woven fabric, then you might want to apply a fabric setting so that the software will apply different defaults that suit that fabric better. And that's done up here in Design Fabric. And so you would have to tick the Apply Fabric and the drop down menu here. If I tick that, I've got a drop down menu here. And it's got Terry, Medium, Light, and Heavy. It's got Knit, Light, Medium, and Heavy. And it's got Woven, Medium, and Heavy, and Light. So pick the one that's most suitable there. You can change all the other default settings for this density, etc., as well, um, either over the top of this if you've chosen a fabric or just from your default fabric. Um, I'll just choose one. I'll choose the woven medium weight. Um, it should keep the same as the default settings. Um, and I'll go OK. And now I've got down here in the design woven medium fabric. There's nothing there if you don't set a fabric. Um, but now I've set it to woven medium weight. So um, once you've done that, um, you can then, if you like, set a thread palette. So the software creates a, oh, gives you a default palette of colors here, and they're based on a range of colors developed by Benina. You may have a collection of threads that you want to, uh, you know, a brand of threads that you want to work with. So, um, and that gives you more color options. So if I, you can change these um, colors down here in the thread palette to reflect those thread colors. So at the moment it's saying faded green banana for number 29. I'm just going to use this palette for now. And as I said, I do have a videos available for the um, setting up your thread palette, uh, etc. So um, and changing the colors and hiding unused threads and all that sort of thing. So I will, if I haven't got that up on YouTube already, I will do one in the near future. 
but you can refer to your manual how to do that as well. Um, the manual is under the help reference manual or you can go to the help topics which will open your web browser and you can type and search in there for thread palettes. Okay, so as I said, I'll just use the default palette. It doesn't, um, the colors will never be exactly what you've got, uh, match exactly what you've got as thread anyway. So um, it's often best just to use a um, color that looks close to what the thread color is. But to get a bigger range, sometimes it's better to use an actual thread chart that's got more colors available. All right. So the next thing to do is to plan your embroidery. How are you going to stitch this? It's good to know roughly, I mean, we can always change the stitch order afterwards, but if you know a little bit about what you want to do first, you can save yourself a lot of work later. So I'm looking at this rabbit and I'm thinking, as I said, I want to simplify the whole design. I want it mostly um, step fill with outlines used to define. I'm going to have some um, whiskers, not as many as this rabbit's got, um, and I'll put some eyes and a mouth and a nose. And basically it will look like a colouring in type drawing when it's finished because I mean after all this rabbit is probably going to be embroidered on something for children so it doesn't need to be lifelike and um, if you did try to make it lifelike you probably wouldn't get it as good as you'd like anyway it's very difficult to digitize um, something that looks perfectly like fur etc and as I said before when you're um, defining your project how lifelike does it have to look or the job you're doing, um, etc. Okay, so I'm looking at this rabbit and I'm thinking the legs blur into the body. So I'm going to create the body which is underneath the head and the ears as one object and I'm going to do that first because that is underneath. I will then do the ears probably. Um, and then the head on top of the ears and then of course the facial features so that's roughly the order I'm going to work in now I'm going to stop this video and call it part one because it's gone on for quite a while and I'll come back and start digitizing in the next video so make sure that you are subscribed and you've turned on notifications so that you get informed when this video when the next video comes up. I'll try and get it done this week. In the meantime, you can hop over to my website if you haven't already done so and get the um, digitizing workflow and the image. Thanks very much.